Hey everyone! Last time on Great of the Avengers, we talked about how Brian Michael Bendis reimagined the team into New Avengers, Mighty Avengers, and Dark Avengers. Now we're going to talk about the Heroic Age, where Bendis returned to the regular Avengers, the core series that we've been rating throughout this series. We'll talk about whether or not this core series and Bendis' time with it makes the grade compared to the rest of Avengers history. Well, here we are at the cusp of round 20 of grading the Avengers. Yeah, we have to talk about Brian Michael Bendis a little bit more. I don't begrudge the guy too much. He does have his moments as a comic book writer throughout his career. But oh boy, does he not look good for this particular video series. After a lengthy run of Avengers-related spin-offs and titles by Bendis we covered in the last round, following the event Siege and all the way into the event Avengers vs. X-Men, Bendis finally got the chance to write the core Avengers team that had finally returned after years of cancellation. Though there is something to be said about the new Avenger, as I was talking about last round, I did enjoy it, even if it has problems. It was an exciting time to be a Marvel fan at the start of the heroic age. After years of being gone, and to be fair, I was a comic book fan at the time, and the Avengers very much felt gone during that time, Thor, Cap, and Iron Man reunited with a new roster. It is at this point that these three really start to become this core part of the Avengers, and that's something Bendis really seemed to push. It was nice to have Thor back, who really hadn't been an Avenger much after Volume 3, and the whole new roster just felt like the Avengers being back in force with a team restored and united to make it really feel and look like the Avengers, but an Avengers changed by everything that had happened. So bolstering classic characters is a huge amount of Bendis' personal favorites from his new Avengers days too, like Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Spider-Woman. What's best about this is that roster is full of interesting character combinations that could have brought a lot to this time period in Avengers history. Although you might note the tone I'm taking already here. But I'm not even done talking about all the good potential on the table yet. There was one final wrinkle and I think it could have been a cool twist. Bucky Barnes, once a sidekick to Captain America, then Winter Soldier, had at this time been named the new Captain America and joined this new team of Avengers. On paper, there's a lot to be excited about for Avengers Volume 4. Though I found the previous round of Bendis Avengers comics quite middling overall, as I said at the start of this video, Bendis is perfectly capable of making excellent books. Ultimate Spider-Man had a big influence me on becoming a comic book reader. Well, he did pretty admirable stuff with characters like Daredevil and Jessica Jones back in the day. So I didn't come into this volume ready to write this guy off entirely as a writer, and I do admit I read very few of these books beforehand. So I came into this round having not read many of these particular books, unlike the last round, and kind of coming into it with an open mind. There were a lot of cool Avengers on this team, and it helps matters that the art of this era was done with pencils by John Romita Jr inks by Klaus Johnson, and colored by Dean White as the initial art team. These books look and feel interesting compared to other modern Avengers stories. Their relatively more cartoonish and simple designs don't really match the more realistic and detail-oriented tones of the modern age, but instead evoke, to me, a more classic sense of art sensibilities from the Avengers' earliest days. But over time in the series, we have a lot of different artists and creators shuffling in and out of the series, and I start to lose sense of things. It becomes a very inconsistent book in terms of how it looks. Once Ramita and the gang take a step away from the Avengers books, everything falls apart in terms of art consistency. Of course, that is the biggest problem with this series. But it started in the 1980s, and I was quick to note when it happened in Grading the Avengers. It took hold in the 1990s, and firmed up in the 2000s was by the time Volume 4 of Avengers came around, the plague of comics. I am, of course, referring to these tie-in crossover events. Just like last round, this Avengers series starts out at least somewhat decent, before turning into a boring slog of tie-in issues or filler in between these big events. However, unlike something such as New Avengers, Avengers Volume 4 doesn't start all that strong to begin with. The first story is all about time travel, a fun enough idea in and of itself, and especially for the Avengers. But if you know Bendis as a writer, you know that he tends to rely on time travel as a crutch for narrative purposes, and every time he does, it sucks. So it's pretty unoriginal as a writer for Bendis to do something like this here, though to be fair, this is an early example of him doing it. 
but even just looking at it as an Avengers adventure of any kind, it leaves a lot lacking. We get a glimpse of some cool characters and ideas from the future, but nothing is really made of it, and the whole story arc doesn't really come together, focusing way too much on Iron Man at the cost of all the Avengers. Which would be fine in and of itself, except for that is all Avengers Volume 4 does. Then we have the most interesting story in all of Avengers Volume 4, where all of the stuff about the Illuminati that I was talking about last round suddenly becomes public knowledge among the superheroes of the world of Marvel. It leads to a very tense standoff between Iron Man and Steve Rogers, along with the rest of the Illuminati members. The only problem with that is it once again involves exactly one person actually on the Avengers team at the time, in the form of Tony Stark. Everyone else on the team just sort of stands around while the Illuminati sorts this stuff out with Steve Rogers. And again, remember that Steve Rogers isn't even Captain America on this Avengers team at the time. From there it's a straight shot to the event fear itself all the way into Avengers vs X-Men at which point Avengers Volume 4 was cancelled. And these stories are so unremarkable and unrelated to Avengers themselves, it really feels like I don't have much to say about these tie-in books whatsoever. The events themselves are okay. Fear itself and Avengers vs X-Men are entertaining in their own rights, overall, with some solid moments, but the actual Avengers tie-ins feel pointless and largely a distraction from the Avengers having their own series and stories. It really feels like this volume, more than any other time in Avengers history, is where the tie-ins are most affecting the actual Avengers comics. In the past, these tie-ins would happen less frequently, and even then often felt like they derailed the series pretty severely. In the future, tie-in comics would be published as their own mini-series, a wonderful change that made it much easier to ignore them if they happened to be annoying or pointless. This trend is really bad in Volume 4. Effectively, the Avengers during this time couldn't really be about anything other than the events. The sprawling roster of fun Marvel characters that could have had a chance to shine here are instead largely ignored for the entire 30 plus issue run. This applies to everyone on the team equally with the sole exception of Iron Man, because this might as well be Tony's series for the first few arcs. No other character really gets a chance to take center stage across Avengers Volume 4. And the absolute worst, most insulting example of that is Bucky Barnes. Bucky being Captain America and on the Avengers was a unique opportunity and a rare, fleeting moment in Marvel history. The idea of him working with the Avengers side by side fascinates me, but sadly, I remain tantalized by the idea only. In Avengers Volume 4, Bucky Barnes as Captain America doesn't have a single thing to do, and before he really gets to have any sort of moment as an Avenger, his time as Captain America is suddenly brought to an end during the Fear Itself story, as did his time with the team. Before we knew it, Steve Rogers was back, Bucky's time as Cap was relegated to a part of trivia and Marvel history, and he never got to be an Avenger the way so many other superheroes were able to be over the years. I can forgive a lot from Brian Michael Bendis, and as I tried to make clear in the last round, I actually do like a bunch of stuff that man has written over the years, but I really struggle with this. As people have said in the comments, and I myself have said when referring to Jeff Johns, we really don't know to what extent these people had power or control over their own stories due to Marvel and its editorial influence. So it's important not to judge Bendis too much for that, but it is a shame. No other writer has or may ever have the chance to write a Bucky Barnes Captain America on the Avengers team again. Certainly not in the mainstream continuity, at least not very easily and Bendis essentially squandered the whole idea, gave away the opportunity for just another of his boring, lazy time travel stories or a bunch of nonsense about his Illuminati, followed by filler nonsense taking us from one tie-in event to the next. While Bucky as Cap was certainly explored elsewhere at this time, this was his chance to be an Avenger, and either Bendis or Marvel couldn't even be bothered to give it a second thought. Yep, it's time for a big, big drop for Bendis in terms of grade compared to last round. D grades are rough through and through, and you know you've messed up when you start entering Heroes Reborn territory, but Bendis' only run of true Avengers books, stripped away of all the new, mighty, and dark gimmicks, profoundly feels lacking in quality. This is the Bendis from his mid to late career at Marvel, where he feels like he lost whatever edge he might have had as a writer in his earlier days. 
Though the art isn't nearly as bad as some of the other stuff we've seen in this series, it's one of the more boring and lackluster runs in all of Avengers history overall. Given that it barely has any importance in terms of continuity outside of the Illuminati stuff, and it was published on its own, standalone volume, like every other Avengers run from here on out, it becomes one of the most skippable runs in Avengers history, and I recommend you would avoid reading it for this very reason. Next up is a big one. We're going to be talking about Alan Pickman and his time with the Avengers. <laughs> 